Whoa, what was that? Hello and welcome to Busy BDV. I'm your host Lucas Wickley and this week we're continuing with the Cessna 152 build series with part 2. If you haven't seen part 1, click over here. So in this video I'm going to be showing how I painted the plane, I'm also going to be showing how I got the dimensions for this airplane, and I'm also going to be showing a short music compilation video from the flight footage from this plane. So let's check it out. First thing first is the paint, and the first thing to do here is to get a base coat. Since the majority of the Cessna 152 is white, that is the color of the base coat. After the white base coat was painted, I got some blue painter's tape, and I masked off all the areas where the stripes were going to go. Then I painted the stripes and waited for them to dry. After that, I peeled off the tape, and then I had my mom help me touch up the areas where the paint had gone where it wasn't supposed to. And this is what I ended up with. Now that the plane is painted, let's check out how I got the dimensions for building this airplane. Right after that, we'll jump into the flight compilation video, and you will definitely not want to miss that. Here you can see the top view of the real Cessna 152 on the right, and my model on the left. If I overlap these images, you can see how the wing on my model is much longer and slightly wider than the wing on the real Cessna 152. This is for added lift. Moving on to the elevator, you can see how the movable part on the real Cessna 152 is much smaller than on my model. This is for additional pitch control. Similarly with the side view, if I overlap the images and focus on the rudder, you can notice that the shape of the rudder on the real Cessna 152 is slightly different than on my model. The slightly less angle on the leading edge gives me more surface area and in turn, more stability in the yaw axis. The movable part of the rudder on the real Cessna 152 is much smaller than the one on my model. This is for additional rudder control. All these changes allow a model this small to fly like the real thing. So yes, unfortunately this plane did crash. What happened was it tip stalled and then it went into a death spiral and there was no way I could pull out of that at such a low altitude. When I came in contact to the ground, the wing hit first, breaking off all the rubber bands, then the main fuselage hit, bending up the motor mount and causing multiple fractures across the body. Now it is repairable, but the only thing I do have to replace is the motor, not because it's broken, but because it does not have enough thrust for this airplane. The plane with the battery weighs 850 grams and the motor only produces 600 grams of thrust. I at least need a one to one power ratio to fly though. So I will be repairing this plane in the future, but until then, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like my videos and I'll see you guys next time.